ocean has gone up two or three inches or something like that. Uh, and eventually, you know, all of the, the Florida coast and any of the coast that, uh, that has big beaches on it is going to be uh, uh, going to be impacted. Is that going to be a problem for <laughs> insurance companies? Well, if, if water levels continue, to, if water levels are in fact rising and continue to rise in coastal areas are going to be you know, reformed, uh, that'll be an issue for anyone who's providing, you know, flood coverage associated with, you know, coastal areas. Um, I should say that in, in the personal insurance area, you know, homeowners insurance or, you know, in, in particular, um, it isn't the insurance industry that is providing the flood coverage uh, without, you know, getting into, um, you know, how all this is split. I mean, everybody's heard of FEMA, right? And FEMA is actually the, uh, the federal vehicle for providing uh, you know, flood-type coverage associated with, um, you know, homeowners insurance. So, you know, when you think about the losses associated with the Storm Sandy, mm -hmm. And you think about what our losses were, at least in the uh, personal insurance area, it was really geared towards wind damage. And think of trees falling over, landing on buildings and whatever, and, and roofs needing to be fixed. That's the kind of damage we faced as a result of Sandy. In terms of the real high dollar amounts that have been thrown around as to the true cost of the storm, uh, most of that was, uh, was covered by FEMA. And there you run into the whole issue of, you know, the fairness of the premium structure and what people are paying, you know, who have houses at the coast, um, how that is uh, really, uh, you know, divided up into insurable interests, how the federal government is acting as a backstop, what those premiums are going to be in the future. Um, and that's an evolving story at this point in time. So, um, yes, in terms of, you know, looking at risk, you know, seeing coastal areas being redefined, that is something you know, that we think about, but, um, you know, in terms of actual flood coverage, that's more, that's a, that's a FEMA issue generally. Other questions? I think we're down to a minute to go in this session. All the way in the back, gentleman in the red tie. You're talking upstate New York. Um, you know, <laughs> if it wasn't for the talented people and experienced management folks that I know and um, that you'd want to employ up there because they're tied into the community with their families, there's no reason in hell to begin a company in upstate New York, honestly. <laughs> oh, um, no. I mean, it's just, it, you know, New York State is, is brutal on, Michigan's you know. Michigan's worse. No, well, New York's, that's, it's just a tough, <laughs> tough area. Now, I'm hoping for long-term climate change so it becomes like North Carolina and we have fresh water <laughs> and people start migrating to upstate New York and New York City floods and now they'll move upstate. And 100 years from now, Rochester is going to be hot. All right. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's a great place to leave it, I think. No more blue flashing things on the cars with the uh, snow patrols. Right. <laughs> well, thank you all so much. That was wonderful experience for me personally and I hope you all enjoyed it as well. So thanks again. We're going to get started here in uh, two minutes. Okay. Is David here? Okay. Yeah, Joan Solitar is here uh, from Blackstone. Uh, Ron Fielding 
our 73 and 76 alum, is going to introduce uh, both the interviewer and the speaker. So we'll uh, turn it over to Ron here. Without further ado. I got to fight him down. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Ron Fielding, and I've been asked to introduce our speaker and interviewer for our last panel. So the sooner we can get started, the sooner we can uh, fight the rush hour out there. Joan Solitar is Senior Managing Director and Head of External Relations and the Strategy Group of the Blackstone Group, one of the world's largest alternative asset managers. She sits on the firm's executive and management committees and has direct management responsibility for shareholder relations, public affairs, guiding the firm on analyzing strategic developments, and advising Blackstone portfolio companies on their positioning in the public equity markets. Prior to joining Blackstone, she was Managing Director and Head of Equity Research at Bank of America Securities. During the years 1995 to 2002, she was annually ranked by uh, the Institutional Investor Magazine's All-American Research Team in the area of broker and asset management categories. Um, she's consistently been ranked highly during that same period by the Greenwich Survey of Portfolio Managers. And in addition to her main two jobs listed, she has been the chairperson for the Research Committee of the Securities Industry Association. Uh, our interviewer, uh, David Pelagal from Grant's Interest Rate Observer, has been an analyst there for three years. Prior to that, he has 10 years experience with various buy side firms. Um, while most of you uh, most likely have MBAs, not all of you may have, may have been regular readers of Grant's interest rate observers as I have during the 20 years that I was managing bond portfolios. Um, most of you know about the efficient frontier and how when you took that first capital asset class you learned that treasury bills were considered the risk-free asset and that everything else was priced off of that as risk went up. The expected return also went up, although expected is different than actual returns, as we all know. Uh, Jim Grant is perhaps m most famous for turning that phrase on its head, uh, and certainly Paul Singer would echo our, our first speaker today would echo Jim Grant in saying that at current low rates that we've had in the last four or five years, that buying treasury notes or treasury bonds has been an opportunity to buy a yield-free risk asset. Um, and he has certainly um, spoken for decades about the dangers of both inflating the money supply and other issues talked about today that uh, with a subscription to that you can get Jim Grant's insightful comments. Uh, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to David to begin the conversation. 